schedules um, and we'll be starting games here soon. Um, we want to go ahead and show you uh, this feature um, so that you will be ready for it when it is released to the public here in a couple of days. Um, we also want to let you know of a big release um, that will be happening tomorrow evening. Um, you'll probably see changes on your end starting Thursday, um, but we will be releasing a new updated payment screen um, that will affect all Arbiter game uh, members. I'm not sure how many of you will uh, use the payment screen, just given the fact that WOA is responsible for payment of officials. But um, if you will be using that payment screen, either uh, in the near future or uh, farther down the road, um, I highly encourage you to attend um, the trainings being hosted this week, where we'll be walking you through that new payment screen and the features it has to offer. Um, so those trainings, there will be one, at, I, I believe, in 20 minutes, um, and you can join that. Um, I believe there'll also be one on Thursday. Um, you should have seen, if, if you logged into your Arbiter game account, uh, the ability to register for those uh, clinics or trainings. Um, and like I said, we'll be recording those as well and posting those um, for you to access. And a lot of it is what I covered in last week's training. Um, a few other things that we're going to touch on uh, briefly are just some questions that I've gotten asked by uh, multiple ADs in the Washington area, whether it has to do with a game import template, um, whether it has to do with building your, your teams, um, just some, some certain things like that. Um, also, the integration with VNN, I've gotten asked that a lot. Um, we are partnered with VNN. The API does work. Um, if you're not seeing accurate uh, schedules uh, in VNN versus what's showed in Arbiter, chances are VNN has not made the update on their end to sync with what we are showing in Arbiter. Um, I know I saw a few leagues reach out to VNN um, and request that they run the update on their end, and I believe that the changes have been made for a few of those schools in leagues to now show the proper uh, schedules. Um, so, like I said, just check with your VNN rep. They should be able to take care of you there if you are using VNN and you're not seeing the accurate schedules in VNN. So we'll go ahead and get started. Um, I'll show you the new payments or the new score entry that will be on the schedule page. Let's see here. And I'm going to be showing you a, a video. Um, so this is what the new score entry um, will look like on your schedule page. Um, it's just going to be an added column um, next to your contract column. Here's where you'll see that score entry now. Um, you'll see a spot for the away team and a spot for the home team score. Um, if you enter it once, um, it'll show on your uh, opponent's tab as well. Um, with the WOA, the way it works, um, the officials are going to be responsible for entering the scores uh, in order to be paid. So a lot of these scores you'll see uh, already pre-populated based off of what the officials have entered. Um, but you'll also have the ability to change um, the scores on your end if the official entered the wrong score or if the official failed to enter the score. Um, you'll have that ability on your end. Uh, we'll play this video and it'll kind of walk you through the process of the score entry. Um, being able to filter and then going through all of your said basketball games through for that specific night or that specific uh, month and adding all those scores. 
Um, when you do add the score on the Arbiter game screen, that score is going to be pushed over to your Arbiter live screen. Um, and if VNN is, is also pulling those scores, um, you would see those scores come over in VNN. Um, so VNN would need to look for those scores in the API with us. But um, everywhere in Arbiter, those scores will uh, flow. So that includes Arbiter Live. Um, if you are using Arbiter Live as your, your uh, fan facing uh, platform. So we'll go ahead and play this video and it'll walk you through the process. So here you're selecting a date and a filter. Um, if you wanted to go current school year, you could. If you wanted to find a certain sport and level, you could. And here he's just going to show you how you can add the scores for your different You'll notice after each entry, it does save. Once you enter the score, if you need to know which one's the home and away, if you hover over the scores that you've entered, um, it'll pop up with away score and home score on those two score entries. So it'll show you uh, which team is which there. You'll probably see additional build out of this score entry. Um, this is kind of a, our first attempt of getting this out the door. So this we'll call this phase one. Um, you could see additional scores uh, over time. You'll notice it doesn't let you put in a decimal um, or it won't let you put in uh, letters either. So it's got to be a specific score. So that's the score entry um, real briefly. Uh, you'll see that release, like I said, here in the next couple weeks. Um, should be in time for you guys starting games uh, at the beginning of February. So uh, once games start, you'll be able to add those scores. Those scores will be seen on Arbiter Live um, and other areas of Arbiter. Um, that is different than the score entry that will be on your payments page that we walked through last week. Um, now you can enter them either place um, for y'all's sake as a school i'd probably enter it on the schedule page um, it's going to be easier to enter it there on that schedule page but you'll also have the option uh, in your payment screen um, and you can refer to last week's uh, training video uh, for that information a few other things that i wanted to touch on that i've just gotten questions on within the last week from ad's um, one is adding opponents um, to add opponents, if the opponent is not listed within 100 miles of your zip code, so right here that you can only set within 100 miles, and this zip code is going to pull from what you've got listed as the school zip code, but if the school that you're looking for is with over 100 miles of your zip code, all you need to do is change the zip code here. So if you were looking for a, a school on the other side of the state, um, what I normally do is just Google the zip code of that school. Um, and then you can change the zip code here, find opponents within that zip code, and it'll show you your school there. So that's how you uh, find opponents over 100 miles. Got that question. Um, and that'll take care of you there. For teams, uh, the big question I've gotten is how to set up squads. Um, in order to set up squads and give a squad name, you must create two teams with the same level uh, and gender. So you're not going to have the option to create a squad name unless you try to create a duplicate uh, team uh, of one you've already gotten. So here you'll notice I've got two archery boys first level teams and I'm able to name a squad. However, right here I've got only one boys seventh grade and I'm not able to give it a squad name. However, if I go in and create a new team, and go archery seventh boys i'm going to get a pop-up to add squad name and you'll notice i can add the squad names there where it says it's original team squad name um, this can be listed as a or let's say you're doing a c team and a d team 
You can click done adding squads, fill out the rest of your defaults here. Hit create team. And now you'll see where it's created those squads for the boys archery team. If you needed to get rid of one of these squads, um, let's say you only had a C team and you didn't have a D team. If you go into the D team, scroll to the bottom, you can delete that team. And now it'll just leave you with the seventh grade C team squad. If for some reason you didn't want this seventh grade archery team to have a squad name, maybe you just wanted it as a seventh grade team, or in y'all's case, you, you just wanted a JV team, you didn't want it to have the squad name of C team, just go back into that team. And right here where it has the squad name, if you delete it, fill out the rest of your defaults. Come down and save changes. You'll notice it'll take that squad name away. So that's how you build squads um, or get rid of squads. I've got some questions regarding that. Um, so hopefully that'll clarify there. The other things that I wanted to touch on um, currently with the game import template, um, I've gotten a few uh, questions regarding it because the way the template currently works is it does not look at squads. Um, which is a pretty big concern amongst Washington schools because most of you guys are using squads um, for your C team level. Um, we are going to be making the change to where the squad name will show up on that import template. Uh, the release for that change is on February 10th. Um, so in the meantime, uh, if you are pulling a game import template, uh, you'll see duplicates listed underneath the team. Um, if you select one and import it, uh, it'll be the same. Uh, even if you try to select both teams, when you import it, it'll only import that one level. So that change we're working to make uh, in time for 2.10 release date. Uh, I know I've gotten quite a few questions regarding that, so I wanted to clarify that, let you guys know of the change that's coming. Uh, in the meantime, for those squad uh, schedules, probably your quickest way is going to be adding the games uh, for your home games one by one, unless you use the game import template and then just go in after you've imported those games and change the home team uh, to whatever squad uh, is actually going to be playing in that game. So those are your two options for the next uh, 12, 11, 12 days until we get that release out the door with the new game import template. Um, and that should help you there. Um, and then the league scheduler, um, there is a current bug in the league scheduler. Uh, when you creating a league schedule on your second step, uh, let's get there real quick. This second step of adding schedules for other teams. Um, this is currently a bug in the system where this is not working. It won't create the second schedule for your other teams. Uh, the workaround for that right now, um, that will also be fixed in the 2.10 release. Uh, but the workaround for that currently is going to just be creating a league schedule for each team uh, that you're wanting to create a league schedule for. Um, we did make the recommendation that this first year uh, we encourage you to use the game import template or to create games one by one just to learn the system. Um, the league scheduler I know does not fit all the uh, needs of the WIAA members yet, so it's another tool that we're currently working to enhance uh, and make better for you guys. But in the meantime, uh, you can either use that game import template that we have uh, or you can add the games one by one. Let's see what questions we've got in the chat. We'll get those answered real quick, and then I want to give you time to get over to the uh, payment screen training if you do intend to uh, attend that training. Uh, looks like we've gotten an app uh, question. The only current app available uh, for Arbiter users is for officials. Um, we are working to build an app for schools and coaches. Um, but that won't be available in this school year. Um, that would be something that may be available in time for next school year. So 
no app currently. Uh, the best thing to do would be to log on to Safari on your phone and, and just uh, access Arbiter that way. Uh, let's see. Um, looks like we also got some questions about the schedule import. I did clarify that. Um, uh, with squads, looks like Scott had a question. Um, looks like that was also answered uh, in this training. So um, if you've got additional questions, I will drop my email in the chat. Uh, feel free to reach out with any questions you might have. Um, I'll try to get back to you as quickly as possible. I'd also encourage you to utilize the uh, Arbiter resource page on the WIAA site. I will also drop the link to that in the chat. Um, you'll find all of the uh, prior uh, trainings recorded there. Um, and then we'll also be adding FAQ sheets where we just answer some of the basic questions that were covered in the uh, trainings. We'll be adding some of those past FAQs as well as today's FAQ uh, here in the next day or two. Um, just got another question regarding the VNN schedules. Uh, the scores will load into VNN if you guys request that from VNN. Um, officials will not flow over to VNN. I do not believe um, that would be a question for VNN, but I do know the schedules flow over. Um, and I would assume the scores will now that we have the score entry in Arbiter as well. Um, so I'm going to give you guys about five minutes uh, to get over to the uh, training for the uh, Arbiter payment screen, the new payment screen. Uh, if you've got any other questions, feel free to reach out to my email. And we'll get those answered. Um, we should have today's recording of this training. Uh, available to you guys later today on the WIAA resource page. Appreciate the time. Uh, hopefully we were able to answer your questions. Uh, you guys have a great rest of your day and a good rest of your week.